Welcome to teaching the Fun Music for Beginner ukulele program. So before we begin, do you need to know anything about music or the uke? No. All lessons are taught with detailed videos. You can learn along with your students. Videos include detailed photos to show you how to play chords, such as this one. Sometimes there'll be a countdown from 10 to 1 on the top of the video, and you may choose to stop the video to give your class more time to complete the assigned task. Be sure to refer to your video notes before each lesson so that you know what materials are needed, what is being taught, and when you need to pause the video. A class tracking sheet is also provided so that you can track the progress of each class. Now the plan for this unit of study is to have the students learn the three basic chords, C, F, G7, through songs of increasing difficulty. Occasional activity pages will be used to help consolidate learning. And at the end of the unit, a final written and playing test will be given to measure your student's musical skill. The unit covers 20 lessons and accumulates in a play date with a younger class, usually kindergarten or grade one. At the play date, your students will pair up with the younger students sitting side by side. Your students will play their ukuleles while the younger students sing the songs. Your students may sing along if they feel confident. Near the end of the play date, your students will have the opportunity to teach the younger children how to play a C chord with the song Ring Around the Rosy. This play date has always been a great success with many older students asking if it can be done again. Upon completion of this unit, your students will be ready to play songs from the internet and suggested sites and songs will be given. Don't be afraid to try songs with other chords like D, A, A minor and E minor. It will be easy for most students to learn new chords at this time as they have a good understanding of chord charts and their fingers have become quite agile. So to help you do better with your program, let's take a comparison look between traditional music and the Fun Music for Beginners ukulele program. This is what traditional music looks like in a book or on the internet. You have the text with the chords written above it. Sometimes you'll see strum marks and each one of those lines represents a strum of the previously written letter. Here you can see you would strum two C chords and then two G7 chords. But a problem with this type of music is down here, there's no line between the F and the G7 and the C, so it means you only need to strum once. With new beginning musicians, it's hard because they don't have that intuitive sense to know when to change their chords. They're strictly looking at the music. And if you were to take away the strum marks, which sometimes happens, it gets really confusing to the kids, should they be waiting one beat or two beats between each chord change? So they're wondering, when do we strum? With the fun music, it's really easy to know when to strum. If there's a gray box, it means it's silent, but it represents one beat. Here, we can clearly see we need to do two strums of a red C chord. Here, it's clear to see we only need one green F strum and one blue G7 strum. So it makes it clear and easy to know when do they strum. Another problem that can happen in frustrating students when they're first learning is understanding when do the beats fall. Here we can see the third beat, but the third beat now doesn't fall at the same place. It's over further to the right because of the writing of the sentence. Third beat falls all the way over here, then it comes back. There's no visual spacing guide to let the children know when each beat occurs. But with fun music, it's really easy because all the beats are evenly spaced across with eight beats on each line. What also helps them is there's a bouncing ball and this bouncing ball helps them to follow along with the music. 
Each song is presented at three different tempos. First, very slowly, then medium speed, and then a faster speed. So the children all get a chance to learn how to play the song slowly and then finally play it up to regular tempo. Another question that kids have, or frustration, is wondering which finger shape is G7 chord or what is the F chord? When you see your kids only once in a while, it's really hard for them to remember what is the G7. There's no visual cue on this music to help them know the finger shape. With a fun music program, it makes it much easier because you can see red is your C chord, blue is your G7, green is your F. Also, to help students remember which finger shape is a G7 or a C, are the stickers that go on the ukulele. You'll frequently see slides like this in the videos that show children how to make their chords using both pictures and the ukulele. Such as this one, where we see the first finger going to the blue and green dot for finger one, finger two going to string three, and finger three going to the first string, which makes the blue triangle. So they're putting an imprint in their mind of the blue triangle shape in their brain, which makes it easier for them to get that chord. Also, they're shown illustrations of chord charts on the right and showing how it connects to the actual fingering on the ukulele. And this is preparing them for reading chords other than C, F, and G7. Now, some people might ask, are colored stickers on the uke a crutch? Well, no, they're not. Most rotary music classes occur only once a week, so it's very hard for students to remember finger shapes on the ukulele without some form of assistance. Colored chords help take away the panic and frustration in trying to remember the chord shapes. It makes reading music go much faster and smoother. Students can focus their brain power on how they are going to get their thumb and fingers to form new and strange positions rather than focusing on where they are supposed to go. Once they have these three chords learned, their fingers are used to making new finger shapes, their brains are used to reading chord charts, and they suddenly find it very easy to learn new chords using the traditional black letter approach. Colored beak markers make it very easy to see patterns in the music. And most students think this way of learning is easier than the traditional method, which in turn leads to fewer behavior problems when teaching. Now, as you're teaching, you want to keep track of your lessons. So you're going to make a copy of this tracking sheet for each of your classes. Now, this page here is starting at lesson number 10. So let's assume we've done nine lessons. The kids have learned quite a few songs. So what you're going to do is You'll put the date up here. You always want to start your class with one of the warm ups. That's what's listed at the top of each page. So we start up with warm up three, and then you want to build up the encouragement of the children. So you're going to start with two or three songs that they already know. So let's say on this Monday, you're going to do a kookaburra. You're going to skip head and shoulders. You're going to do ring around the rosy. And then you're going to teach the lesson, I'm a little teapot. Then you're not going to do the review because that you've already played the song three times in the lesson. And you've got just enough time to teach Old MacDonald. The next week, you start with your warm up and then pick two or three songs for them to review. It builds up their esteem and it gives them practice. So let's say you decide to skip Kookaburra because we did it last week. We're going to do Head and Shoulders. We'll skip Ring Around the Rosy. We don't play Lesson 10 because we've already played it once, but we're going to do the Little Teapot song. We're not going to do the Old MacDonald lesson because it has a whole bunch of other things in that lesson. We'll just do the Old MacDonald song. And then you decide you're going to teach lesson 12. We have enough time. 
We'll do the fancy strumming lesson and there's enough time to teach the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star lesson. The next week, you'll just continue always starting with your chord warm up, and then you'll pick a few songs, two or three of them, that you want the children to play to warm up their fingers, and then you'll teach your lesson that you need to do. This helps you keep track if you use one for each class. At the bottom, there is room for you to write notes, so if you have any individual concerns about certain students or about the class itself, then you've got space to keep those notes. The most important thing when you're teaching this program is just to relax and enjoy yourself. If you have any questions, give me an email. I'd be happy to answer them. Most important, just have fun. Good luck.